Hello everyone. I hope that y'all are all doing well. Just coming back for a little ammo update and to test this new camera. It is actually not a camera or a phone. It is a camera phone. It's the one with the really cool like crazy zoom lens that actually like zooms in. Wait, hold on. Like so it zooms in. Well obviously it's blurry now but it has auto whatever. It doesn't make the picture bigger. It's got this big old actual camera lens that sticks out the front of it, and it's actually really cool. I, I dig it. So now, the reason why I like to use a phone versus um, like a like some of the cam the other handheld cameras that I have is because I have a lot of like uh, retardation when it comes to. Um, like editing videos, moving them from one device to another. It is so much easier to do it on a phone and go straight to YouTube. Um, so I, I ordered this phone uh, off of eBay. It is a Samsung S4 Zoom. Really stinking cool. Like from the from the front, like which would be the back of the phone, the part that doesn't have a screen. It looks just like a camera. You would never guess that it's a phone. And then you turn it around and bam, it looks like a phone. And you never guess that there's a big old camera on the back side. Like it actually, you could see the thing zooming in and zooming out. So if y'all are wanting to figure out how to upload videos to YouTube without having the issues of um, having to go from one device to another, you should definitely check these out. The only issue that I'm actually having with this right now is I can't do that because this is like a 3G phone, or for some reason I can't get YouTube uh, to up to uh, update on here where I can use it. I was able to download the YouTube Studio and things like that, but whatever. So, anyways, let me get off of this. And actually, on this on this camera, I could pause my video, go walk walk off, bring back something else, and that way I don't have to cut the video. I could just press this little pause. All right. Now it's unpaused, and I have come back with my podcasting microphone. And now I'm going to pause it again and take it away. Well, now I've unpaused it, and the microphone is gone. Uh, it's way easier to do it this way than splicing videos together. But anyways, just wanted to rant about the camera for a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into the actual uh, deal. I got these at Bass Pro the other day. And uh, they're actually were decently priced. Like I said, I think they're like $24.00. Uh, these are for six five. These are six five millimeter or .264 inch or caliber, um, which is like this is like my favorite caliber. Um, I like it a whole bunch. It definitely does the job. And the six five Grindle uh, is probably one of my favorite rounds. I, I'm a big fan of the little bullet that could. You know, the six five Grindle is definitely enough to kill a deer, and if you put the bullet in the right spot. It kills them amazing. Um, I have shot, let's see, f five or six deer. Actually, one of those my daughter shot. She made a high shoulder shot. It dropped right in his tracks. Did you shoot a big buck? Was it chasing a doe? You know why? Because it's rut, sweetie. That is a nice deer, baby. Did you get to pull the trigger on your first deer? Are you cold? How many points does it have? You want to count them? y'all have watched if made it this far in this video to tell me uh let's see come 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 there we go so here's a casing this is a six five grindle casing right here don't know how well y'all can see that definitely six five grindle uh this is a hornady uh casing but whenever i take one of these here and it just slides right in and it's loose in there too. So I'm guessing once I put the resizer on it, it'll crimp it back down to where it's like 
uh, fits like a snug fit. I'm not sure about how that works yet because I'm not a professional reloader. I'm just getting into that stuff. Like I said in past videos, I have a Lee Breach Lock Challenger Kit reloading kit. That's what I have. Uh, I don't have any uh, cool extra stuff as far as stuff to add to it besides one thing. One thing and one thing only. This guy here. So basically, you put a bullet in here, you smack it down, whatever you do like that, and hit it. It loosens the bullet and makes it fall into here with the powder. You unscrew this, pull the casing out, and then you're able to dump the powder and bullet out. It has like uh, these guys here for different uh, size brass and things like that. Seems pretty cool. Might be a little bit of time consuming, but hey, if I accidentally reload bullets wrong, or want to, like, see, this is an idea that I've had recently. Uh, I can get tons of cheap right now steel 223 ammo, which gives me powder and primer, and I could punch the, uh, knock the bullets out with that little hammer I just showed you, um, keep the powder, and um, of course take the you know the 223 bullet and save them on the side. I might use them at some point. Uh, throw the steel casing away. And then I have small primers to use for 6.5 Grindle, and I also have powder. Right now, I cannot find powder anywhere. I know the same stuff that propels the 223 will do great with this stuff. So that's might, that might be what I have to do. And like I said, it might be a bit time consuming. And once again, YouTube, if you're listening to this, I'm not talking about manufacturing ammo. Manufacturing ammo is mass producing ammo, or at least producing ammo with intent to sell it. That's what a manufacturer does. So, um, just like making your own moonshine isn't illegal until you start selling it without a license, manufacturing ammo isn't manufacturing ammo until you start trying to sell it or dist distribute it or anything like that. So, you two, please lay off. Stop being communist because y'all are terrible. Anyway, so I went to uh, Bass Pro the other day, and their, their prices were pretty good. They're a little bit higher than... Um, you know, like Walmart. Uh, Walmart stayed right in the in the good area for the most part. With a lot of stuff. 308. If you're going to buy a deer hunting rifle and you want something like 308 is amazing. There's no reason to go looking elsewhere. Like I could, I, I haven't seen 65. They did have some 65 Grendel. It was actually the same stuff here. The Hornady Custom SST. This stuff hasn't been too hard to find. But uh, I don't like how the Hornady stuff at all. Any of the Hornady stuff. The Hornady Black. Hornady Custom. I don't like how any of it shoots out of my gun. It's not as accurate as it should be. And actually, the PPU uh, 120 grain boat tail hollow points shoot so amazing out of my gun. Um, so, and these are 120 grain. So I picked these up for 24 bucks. There's only 50 in here. I'm gonna check, check them out and see how good they are. Barnes, a solid copper, all, all copper hunting bullet. I'm down with that. Um, like I said, they had tons of 308 stuff. Um, there was tons of, of 350 legend stuff. It was only the one they had one box of Hornady 170 grain soft points which I think which I think shoot like trash out of my gun and they had a whole bunch of uh, Winchester um, Super X PowerPoint 180 grain stuff for 350 legend at a good price. I think it was like 26 bucks a box um, but um yeah, I mean, that stuff's amazing, but I have a bunch of it already, and I'm trying to get some different things to try. So I'm trying to stick away from ammo that I already own a deal, a, a, you know, a good bit of, and I was looking for other stuff. But I keep noticing everywhere that I go, if, if you want a good deer hunting rifle that you can get ammo for, 308 is the way to go. You can get this stuff anywhere. Also, 350 Legend, if you're okay with just being able to get your hands on the Winchester Super X stuff. Um, that stuff shoots incredible, uh, like great anyways. You're going to be able to kill a deer out to 200 yards with that or, or even a little bit further. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, so 350 Legends is another good way to go. Other than that, I have had issues like with consistency finding other good deer hunting ammo so of, of other calibers. Also, another good one is 762 by 39 the, one, the tall ammo or wolf brand. 123 grain soft points or or otherwise known spire point uh, those do great i have killed one deer with one of those but my dad has killed tons of deer with uh that bullet and so has my younger brother so that is another good one for deer hunting uh i've seen 30 30 once or twice since all this has started um 
like a, like also um, that I've seen a good bit of is because it's not very popular. Six millimeter Creedmoor I've seen, but it's been, you know, not really sporadic. Um, but I've seen multiple different types of stuff and, and grain weights and brands. Um, and it's not super expensive, so six millimeter Creedmoor. If you get your hands on one of those, you should be able to find ammo for it. Not as easily as 308 by any means. 308, you can get this stuff anywhere, and you can get multiple different brands and multiple different bullet grain weights. And uh, so I'm a big fan of that. Um, so I went to St. Louis the other day, like I said. I went to Bass Pro. I picked these up. I almost picked a box of this stuff up, but I did not. I have so much 6.5 Grindel ammo. Uh, like spent casings that I need to reload. You know, is my camera getting blurry or something? Uh, what's going on? Oh well. I guess it's got some getting used to. It's kind of like set weird right now, maybe. Um, but I got so it's got so much. I have so much of this stuff. I think I have like 400 rounds of spent 6.5 Grindel ammo that I'm trying to reload. This is just 50, so I need eight more boxes of this stuff to reload everything that I got, but I don't want just this stuff. I'm interested in also the Spear 120 grain gold dot um, that is a soft point. I think the 120 grain is the sweet spot for my gun. I also have some the Federal um, TNT total, uh, total, wait, wait, what is this? That's uh, um, JHP, jacketed hollow point, and it don't shoot too bad. It's 3,000 feet a second, but still not accurate like I really want it to be. So I think the sweet spot for the Howa Model 1500 Mini Action with the standard weight 22 inch barrel is the 120 grain stuff. Uh, based on the results I was getting with the PPU stuff, um, I think that seems great. Another thing I might do is I have a few boxes of this stuff. I might um, unload it um, with a little hammer thing and then take those SSTs out and then reload all of them with this. That's a pretty good idea. So we'll see. I just, I'm not exactly sure yet. I'm also going to do some ballistic gel testing with that stuff. But it is seeming like ammo is a lot more easier to come by. So we'll just see what happens. There we go. I had to uh, zoom it in just a little bit to get it focused like I wanted it to. It's going to definitely Awesome new pro, an awesome new device that I have. It takes some getting used to. Also picked up some of this stuff. This isn't the box that I picked up, but this stuff is good. I really do wish that Winchester still made. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you. All right. So this is the stuff that's advertised in the box. This stuff specifically here is two and three quarter inch um, um, length shell. It is one and a half ounces of shot, and the shot size is number six. My gun is a Remington Model 870 Express Magnum with red dot on it, turkey camo. It's an older gun, but it shoots great. And um, there's no reason to shoot a three and a half inch, especially if you're not going, you know, this will kill a turkey at 40 yards. And I just did a video recently on some patterns that I did. I actually got this stuff right here. Uh, with This is like just a high brass game load. And I don't know how good, like that's amazing. That's dead, that's dead turkey. Um, here, this is um, just as good with low brass stuff. Uh, this is Remington Nitro Turkey. Obviously, that's amazing. But, uh, you know, this is the Winchester Super X stuff. Dead Turkey. Kent Diamond Shot. If you The middle of the pattern's over here, but that's incredible. Long Beard XR didn't do as good, but it's still a dead turkey. Uh, the Federal uh, Low Brass didn't do that good. And then there's also the Winchester Super Target number eight shot. Most of my patterns over here definitely would have been a dead bird. There's nothing stopping you from killing a turkey uh, with low brass or with a normal pheasant and upland game bird hunting load. But this is the stuff that comes in the Super X box. There's nothing wrong with hunting turkeys with this, especially if you, if you have a good hook tube. This stuff is going to do the trick. There ain't no use to go and buy some super expensive stuff. But having said that, Winchester used to make this stuff. This is called, can you see it? Can you see it? Supreme was there like uh, some of the stuff that was similar to the Super X. This is two and three quarter inch number six shot. It doesn't say how much what the weight of the load is, but this stuff patterns so good. And I only have four of them left. So this is something that I might turkey hunt with this 
some, sometime soon. I'm not going to shoot that stuff. I love it so much. Winchester discontinued it. I wish they would come back out with it. Maybe y'all could talk to them. Possibly have them um, start making it again. That would be like stinking amazing. So we'll just have to see what happens with that. I sent a few emails myself. Also sent some emails because I want Winchester to start making hunting ammo for the 6.5 Grendel. Like deer season xp and winchester super x powerpoint or uh whatever else other hunting bullets they have they have like the winchester uh i forget what it's called oh well something hunter like precision no that's hornery precision hunter anyways they have like a a deer season copper bonded and a few a few different hunting rounds but i feel like they should at least make i mean because they make deer season xp and deer season and, and also um a Super X PowerPoint for 223. Why wouldn't they make it for 65 Grendel? So I did message them and they said that they weren't really thinking about doing that, but maybe y'all can message them also. It's at winchesterammo.com or Olin, O L I N, winchesterammo.com and leave them a message in their contact us section saying that you really want to see them make ammo for 65 Grendel. Um, in the Deer Season XP platform, or not a platform, but that brand and bullet, um, and also the Super X PowerPoint, because those are like Winchester is the bread and butter of ammo, as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned. Um, I never have any issues with Winchester ammo, even when it's the cheap Super X stuff for a rifle. The stuff shoots great; it flat out shoots, and it definitely does the job. is accurate. The, I feel like the Winchester Deer Season XP is a bit more. Um, geared towards the deer hunting, but hey, I've shot, let's see, four deer with my 350 Legend, and I blew through every single one of them with the deer, with the Winchester Super X PowerPoint 180 grains. Like, there's nothing stopping that bullet. Even at 200 yards through 36 inches of ballistic gel, it, there's nothing stopping it. It just goes right through it. I think it's because it's a slower moving bullet at a heavier weight. It just it holds its weight really well, and it, it just goes right through. It's the same thing with like just pretty much any caliber that I've shot the Super X um, PowerPoint through. Um, it just does a great job. 308, 3030, uh, it just does amazing. Now for me, my specific go-to for 3030 is the is the Remington Core locked. Um, but hey, even Remington, I would like to see Remington come out with a core locked round for 65 Grendel. You know, Federal does have a really good hunting round. I think the best hunting round that you could actually buy for the 6.5 Grendel is the Federal Fusion 120 grain. Yep, I paused it again and restarted it. I like this whole deal. So anyways, this is some of the, this, I shot this whole box. I have a few boxes that I shot the complete box of. And I actually killed some deer with some of the bullets that were in this box. So, um, yeah, I mean, this stuff is great. I wish that they made this stuff, though, for 6.5 Grendel. So maybe some of y'all viewers can make that happen. I know this is kind of a lengthy video, but you know, talking about ammo is always fun. So, and also the 350 Legend and 6.5 Grendel are like my really honestly like top two deer hunting rounds for around here in Northeast Missouri where I live. If I had to pick another one that's so suitable for deer hunting, regardless, pretty much regardless of the range, would be the 308 Winchester. It just does a great job. It really does. It is a it is a good round, uh, and it is super available. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm going off of, like availability of rounds um, and like just pretty much everything, like how they shoot, how accurate they are, and uh, just the just the 350 Legend is a newer round. The 65 Grindel is a newer round, but the 308 Winchester is a straight up classic. Um, I would never have anything bad to say about that round. Uh, you can do anything with it. You know, elk hunt, uh, moose hunt. Um, you can uh, predator hunt with it. You know, with some lighter rounds, uh, whitetail deer, um, just long range shooting. It does what you want it to do. I mean, obviously, at, at a thousand yards, six five Grendel has thirteen inches of be better in, in in ten mile per hour wind. Uh, but thirteen inches at a thousand yards, who cares? I'm not going to be shooting a thousand yards. I'm a deer hunter. And I will do a little bit of target shooting, but for the most part, what I care about is uh, getting stuff like that. And that is a little 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 point looks like. Got all kind of split G2s, G3s, and this is an awesome looking deer. I would like to kill something like that in my dreams, huh? 
So, anyways, hope that y'all enjoyed the video. I got to pause this one a few times. To, I basically started making this video because I wanted to get a better idea of like how this new camera, uh, the audio is going to work and, and things like that. Also, over here at the top uh, right corner of the screen, you see a rebel flag that says Heritage Not Hate because it is Heritage Not Hate. I, don't, I haven't, any, haven't had anybody comment about the little sticker yet, but people have to understand is if that flag stood for racism, why were there Confederate money in the South before and during the Civil War? Is because there was issues with taxation in the North, which is why the South subsided and uh, started doing their own thing with their own money and things like that. Yes, there was issue with slavery, but um, the North had slaves too and what have you. Obviously, the abolitionists did a great job and things like that. Um, slavery sucked. I'm, it, it's terrible, but I'm glad that there are um, black Americans living here that helped build this country from basically from the ground up, helped see it through. And at this point, I hope that people start to understand really soon, if they haven't already, is that the color of your skin doesn't matter. What matters is, are you a good person? So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the rebel flag doesn't stand for, you know, uh, I'm going to make this flag look different than the American flag because we want to own slaves and be proud of it. That is not what that flag stands for. So, anyways, I um, hope that y'all enjoyed the video. And um, I am from South Louisiana, by the way. I was born in Thibodeau, Louisiana, and grew up in Gibson, Louisiana, small town. Um, and, you know, um, racism isn't what people think it is, um, especially down there, up here, wherever you are. You know, uh, racism recently has been really brought on by the liberal media. They have been fueling the fire and doing everything that they can to start a race war, a race civil war between white people and black people because they want to be able to bring the UN or the Chinese military into this country and police us and have a reason or an excuse to do so. And so far, a race war like they wanted have, has not started yet, but that's what they want. They don't want black people and white people holding hands, trying to figure out a way together to make this country amazing. Uh, they want the complete opposite. They want a complete war in this country, and they want to be able to eventually turn everything into police state where we are basically kind of like the movie V for Vendetta. Um, so... Do your best not to let that happen. As always, y'all like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. The link to my Patreon is in the description of the channel. And also, I do have a conservative Christian podcast that I started. I only have like two um, episodes on there right now because I don't have a lot of time. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to raise some money to start a podcasting studio. The podcast you can find on CastBox is called For Christ and Country. One more time, y'all, that is called For Christ and Country. It's going to be really good. Um, like I said, it's kind of hard to do a podcast by yourself. It's better when you have a, uh, you know, somebody there with you. to, to Y'all can kind of bounce back and forth off of each other about key points and things like that. So that is why I'm going to be bringing my wonderful dad into the mix, and he's going to be helping me do that. We're going to be talking about all kind of stuff, all the way from the jab, to uh, what's going on in Russia, Ukraine stuff, which I don't believe that the media is, is honestly covering. You know, I believe that they're, uh, you know, that Ukraine has done things that they shouldn't have done. Russia has done things that they shouldn't have done. Uh, both people in the, both countries are in the right. At the same time, both countries are in the wrong. So we're going to be talking about stuff like that. Um, also going to be talking about um, Jesus Christ because uh, that's why we're here. And... Um, a lot of other similar things that are faith-based and uh, country-oriented um, and patriotism and things of that nature. So anyway, I hope that y'all enjoy that. Find it. Subscribe to it. for One one more time, That's it's called For Christ and Country. And if you, like I said, if you do want to support the channel, the link to my Patreon is in the description of my channel. I thank every single one of y'all for stopping by. I hope that y'all come again. See y'all next time.